Here we go. Look out, footy was back. And now the finals are back. But I'll tell you what, we have a very, very, very special AFL Today show for you today. I am James Clemens, not to be confused with Barnaby French. Just saying, <laughs> one of the greats. Uh, this is the AFL Today show brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. But gentlemen, this is a very serious extremely on-point topic that we'll be hitting on today. It's the AFL Today Award Show, gentlemen, Let's over go. there. We have and one Alex Donnelly. Pumped up, Jim. I like how we're doing the awards differently, but correctly. The only awards that you need from this AFL season. In the middle, it's the Penguin Boy. <laughs> I see it. The Stats Boy got dressed up. I feel like a penguin. You guys didn't get the memo. This is a very prestigious awards ceremony, guys. you got to dress up and look sharp and look at your best. I don't know what you guys are doing. What are you doing? My favourite thing is that your parents bought you that suit <laughs> when you were eight and no, it still fits. It is a bit too small, I'll admit that, but it's, I'm still looking right around. He's class it from the, the joint. From the uh, half up, top half up. But He's not wearing it. pants. No, you don't need pants. It is the bye week, so we have a Sunday night special for you where this is the award show. We're giving away the AFL Australia Awards. It is. You just called it AFL Australia. Elvis, AFL Australia, it all works. <laughs> I the thought A you did that on purpose, yeah. It all works because, like, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, we do awards. That's true, that's true. And so this is very much in that same fashion where these are the only awards that you need to know about. Everything yeah. else falls by the wayside. It's all just completely pointless. These are the only ones that matter. Definitely. These are the on-point awards. These are the awards that the fans want. This is about footy. This is the nuts and guts of this beautiful game. We call Aussie Rules footy, and it's awesome. So make sure you have subscribed to the, what, YouTube channel and yeah. across all the social media channels because there'll be little bits and bobs from this. But you, most importantly, it's so you can see Stats Boy in yeah. his uh, suit. So Everyone I'm, wants to see that. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> right. Let's do it. I'm just stealing the sun, <laughs> sun's trumpet to do the awards. It's time for the AFL Today Awards for 2024. <laughs> do you want to start at the top? Sure. Yeah, that's how it usually works. It's yeah. a momentous occasion. It is. This it is. is the nerd award because this is the award that they already give out. It's for the best and fairest. The brown, the Chaz Brown. The Chaz, yes. Best and fairest. Oh, geez, did you did you help an old lady across the road <laughs> to be the best and the fairest? Uh, people who didn't, you know, actually, you know, make it through the season eligible for this award. Uh, Isaac Henney. Isaac Henney's a big one. Yeah. Well, he's the one. Zach yeah. Butters. No, he just got fined a lot. He gets fined every week. He's, he didn't get a uh, suspension. Still. Who is going to win the Brownlow medal, gentlemen? These odds we have in this one are brought to you by Top Sport, of course. Uh, I wrote my three down, and I figured this would go one, two, three. And then I looked at the odds, and I'm like, oh, I've just chosen the top three favorites. That's all right. It's still a bit of In order, in fact. Patrick Cripps will win the Brownlow medal. He's my Brownlow medalist. Yep. He's my pick for the Brownlow medal. I will brook no argument. Simple as that. <laughs> $2.34 favorite. Nick Dacos is second favorite, two dollars forty. I feel like we talked about this about six weeks to go on the AFL Today show. Nick Dacos would come from the clouds. He'd rack up three or four three point games. I reckon he's done enough to probably pip everybody else. Maybe even enough to pip Cripper. I don't know about that. I think the odds are way too close to uh, Cripper. That that doesn't seem right to me. Dacos had that middle patch. I don't know. Cripper was so much more consistent. I think the yeah. hype. At the end of the season, because Dacos had a couple of really good games, just got a little bit out of hand. He also had a shocker against the Swans. So it's mm. like he's had two out of three games that were good. There was a couple of games in the middle of the year he wasn't that great either. But because it's like, oh, shining light, shining yeah. light. Robbed last year, shining also, light. Also, amount of games they won, obviously they didn't make the finals. The Blues did. So, yeah, I'm leaning towards Cripper. That's right, the Blues did. Uh, number three is Lockie <laughs> Neal at $8.50. Ooh. Could he possibly win a third Chaz Brownlow medal. When he comes out and says, I've been better this year than last year, and he, he won a Brownlow last year, you're like, oh, the you're just going to win it again, aren't you? The umpires showed last year that they love him as well. He got some votes where he shouldn't have got votes. So I don't think he should have won the Brownlow last year. And he's had a better year. I agree with him. I think he has had a better year. I'll pay that. He shouldn't have won last year. No. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Errol Gordon should have won. So that was my pick. My okay. pick is Patrick Cripps, Dacos, Neil. Wouldn't be a giant surprise if, like, there's a tie in those in that three, yeah. whether it be for first or for second, obviously. Uh, 
The best value Brownlow pick, though, looking at these odds. We'll have top fives and tens as we get closer we to as well. Yep. We've got more of this, like, you know, heading into the, uh, well, closer to the actual count itself. Which is away. Obviously, for another couple of weeks. Yep. yep. The best value that I found is Adam Trelaw at $67 Ooh. with Top Sport. Oh. He could have a from the clouds run like Ollie Wines or Tom yeah. Mitchell the last five, what, five, six years? Where Tom Mitchell wasn't from the clouds. He was good enough, but no one was like, oh, he's definitely going to win. Yeah, but I think everyone was like, because he accumulated so many possessions throughout the year. And no, he was that's everywhere. very noticeable. Where Same Trelaw as Trelaw. Comes, yeah, yeah, but you yeah. don't have players like Nick Dacos, Bond, you know, that are going to get so many votes. Flip side, though, the tr- like because Bont is there and hasn't like impacted so many games as he mm. might have done in the past, I feel like Trelaw, which is that accumulation, just has that sneaky opportunity to be like, two votes, a hey, Trelaw. Could get a lot of two twos, votes. Yeah. A hey, Trelaw. Two votes, a hey, Trelaw. Three votes. Has anyone ever won hey, the Brown, though? Trelaw. Without uh, a three vote game? Well, I, I might have to look into that before the next you're, show. You're the stats guy, I will, stats guy. I will look into that before the next show. Nice one. So I like Trelaw at $67. Just because of the simple fact is like, if you're telling me there's a chance, like it's very not out of the realm of possibility in my brain. Fair enough. $67 nice. is very good. You brain. are a galaxy brainer, though. I do love galaxy <laughs> braining myself out of some money. That's true. Uh, but two dollars thirty four for Crips is the favourite. Two dollars forty for Dacos, and then eight fifty for 50 Neil. Eight fifty is a good bit of value there for Neil. I think it's great value mm. for Neil. Just saying. I like it on that. Right, there's my brown though picks. Stats boy. Yeah, I've gone very similar. I think Crips it's his to lose. Two dollars thirty four. I still think that's a good bet. I think that could be a lot less, and Dacos should be a little bit closer to Neil's sort of eight dollar fifty price. The other one though, I'll get a bit of value. Caleb's wrong. Twenty six bucks. Whenever Freo had a big game, he was get he's getting the three votes. He's an absolute star. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, people saying he should be in the All-Australian team, I think, just outside, but he's an absolute freak. So I think $26 for a guy that just dominated every week, 30 disposals pretty much in his average, so pretty good value there. Uh, Sheezel, looking at my Ca- beloved... Counterpoint. Boss. Yeah. Uh, can you pick Caleb Sarong out of a lineup? What do you mean by that? Do you reckon the umpires can? Oh, uh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious. He got a lot of votes last year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I reckon they can. Ended up on 24 votes last yeah. year. Uh, yeah. yeah, 24. Same as Jack Viney. Which is uh, pretty crazy. 24 heaps of votes. I, I think he'll get a little bit more than that. I he think could the be thing right is for there. Sarong is that it's like threes or not muches. That's true. He, so. he had, really had some a lot of big games, but I, I think he'll be right up there. Interesting. Mm. And then my other one, uh, just my beloved North Melbourne, Sheasel, most votes for North. He's the second favorite at $1.95. I think that's a weird one that Aldi used first. So Sheasel's been a lot more consistent. 11 games this year, over 30 touches. He had 17 goals compared to Aldi use 11. So we had uh, Cripps, when, when a lot of other players have been up there in the brown though, the umpires go, oh, he just got 30 touches, but he's also kicked a couple of goals. And Cheezle did that a lot this year, so I think he'll be taking over LDU. $1.95 on top score, I really like. <clears throat> Counterpoint. Wouldn't the umpires be like, who led that kid on the field? He does look like a kid, doesn't Why he? Why <laughs> are one of the Oz kickers still out here? Yeah. What is happening here? There's yep. something going awry, yep. and they're not entirely sure what's happening. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But he's a freak. I reckon he's going to lead North's votes. Nice one. <laughs> Alex. Uh, having a look at a couple of uh, team votes here. So I'm having a look at Jason Horn francis to get the most votes Ooh. for Port Adelaide. Zach Butters, short price favourite. Stats going off is just sandwich a genuine bet. sandwich bet head yep. to head. Yep. Uh, so Horn francis $3.75. Last year he got 16 votes, and everyone's like, Oh, yeah, you were just okay. This year's stats along every line are way better. He's uh, averaged 22 touches a game, and he's got 25 goals alongside his name as well. You have a look at that winning run that Port have put on towards the end of the year. Western Bulldogs, 20-3, and 23-1 against Carlton, 27-1 against the Swans, Very where they won by a million yeah. points. Against the Ds, 28-2. and two. He's getting the three votes that game. Against the Crom, 23-2. and two. Against Frio, 20-2. and two. You got earlier in the year when they beat Geelong, 26-1, and 27-2, and 20-2, and 24-1. and one. He is yeah. going to rack up a lot of votes. I think in a lot of those ones, though, he might get the two and Butters gets the three and it'll just pip him. Like, even if he, what did he get, 22, 28 and two, Butters might have had 30 and one and they'll be like, oh, he's still got, yeah. That's the only thing, but. I feel like Horn Francis, yeah. his disposal is a lot more damaging, whereas Butters can sometimes get it and just spray it. Yeah, fair enough. I don't mind the odds on that one, though, 375. Mm. You notice the blonde hair on the socks up, too. True. Awesome. And then finally, Daniel Rioli to get the most votes for Richmond at $4.40. Ooh. I don't think there's going to be a lot of votes for Richmond throughout the year. Nick Vloston will get votes in the game that they beat yeah. the Swans. How do you split eight brown <laughs> votes across an entire team? Yeah. Well, are we doing like like the winner is just on four votes yeah. for Richmond? Yeah. Is that what we're saying? I reckon he'll get three against St Kilda when they lo- when they uh, got close late in the year. And there's a couple other games where he might pick up one or two or he's mm. had 30 touches. Well, remember when Richmond beat Sydney? Um, oh my God, I forgot about that. They'll get a few <laughs> votes there. Who wins it? The brown uh, 
Cripper. I don't care because Isaac Heaney's not eligible. Oh, boo. Look Cripper. at this sad <laughs> sack uh, over here. Give us something. I, it's not Soggy Sorrow yeah. Sunday. Like, what are you doing? It's the award show. I I this is getting yeah. to get up. You're yeah. going to pick a Come brown. Like, no, I'm just sad because my <laughs> man yeah. won't win it. Uh, Do you I, think I wouldn't be stoked if, like, like, Crips is fine? It's like, I'm also just stoked to see who wins the nerd award. <laughs> the best and fairest. You mean the midfielder award. Uh, I think Crips will win it. I just don't want Dacos to win it personally. Nice one. Fair enough. All right. That's the Nerd Award, the Brownlow Award. How about actually what the Brownlow isn't? The most valuable player. Mm. Yeah. This, okay. the Brownlow, of course, is the best and fairest. Who's the most valuable player in 2024? Patrick Cripps is the obvious one for me. Very Take obvious, him out yeah. of that Blues team and they are They're cooked. real bad. I was going to say Waiters for Carlton. Ooh. At the same time, Cripps, like... I feel like last year didn't have as much of an impact on this yep. team as he did this year. Bit injured, I think. Yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, Nathan Murphy. We yeah, said do that. You at have the to start play to be the MVP, though. Well, <laughs> he's like the most he, valuable player proving. because without him there, true, they went from premiers to not making the finals. Yeah, so you could say the same thing about Brayshaw. I think even Pies fans took him for granted a little bit because at the start of the season, like, oh, where's that guy that gets all the spoils? So there yeah. you go. And the other one is Brody Grundy. Sydney were kind of what? Mm. First round out of the finals last year. Yeah. Absolutely missing just a really decent tap Ruckman. They got Brody Grundy. They're the best team we've seen in 150 years. <laughs> Smash cut. My counterpoint will be Tom McCartan for the Swans. Oh. Uh, down in defense. He's being too serious for this award show. It's weird. <laughs> You're saying most valuable player. Talking about Tom Sydney. McCartan, I think, is the Swans there most valuable player. Up if, he goes, if he goes See, down and gets injured, really the Swans can't win the flag. He's going to wind him up a little bit. You don't think you can win the is flag without Tom sugar? McCartan? Do you no. think his blood sugar is low? Like just some, some of maybe. 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 There we go. He's, he's back. Leo, get me a little bag of shapes. <laughs> yeah. The baby just found out the word lolly, and yeah. now he's just like beside himself. Oh, really? Because like someone gave him like a snake. At uh, my mother in law's 70th. And he's, he and loves, he's like, ah, oh, you go, little tack. And I'm like, I don't think he's ever had a lolly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sure. And he's just like, <laughs> it's like punching on with old ladies. It's chaos. Yeah. Anyway, is uh, it too obvious to say Nick Dacos? No, I, like against Brisbane, I don't think he is because took I don't, him over the line. Like, I'm also not entirely. Well, I think he has games where he's the most valuable player in the comp. Yeah, but then if he doesn't play well, Collingwood just don't win. Sure. Yeah, I'll give Same you thing that. goes for uh, Cripps. And for Freo, Josh Tracy. As soon as he went down, they started losing games. That's true. Very good call. Max Gorn is another one for me. I think yeah, every time he didn't that. play, Melbourne were just absolutely mm. cooked. So, yeah. Stats Boy, you got a nominee for most valuable yeah, player? Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head with Cripper. I think you take him out, they're nowhere near finals, Carlton. Just the uh, overall team without him would be cooked. But my one, a bit of a left field one, Tom Stewart. I know Geelong obviously made the top four, but they put him in the midfield when they need it. They get they win the clearances. They put him in defense. They win the intercept marks. When he got injured or suspended and things like that, they look cooked. They could put him anywhere but the forward line and he would dominate. And yeah, he was the reason they sort of got on a roll. They got that confidence in the midfield because of Stewart just uh, uh, bullying his way through there. So I think he's the most valuable player for me. It's interesting. Like I love the idea, like the, the sort of weird dichotomy in the AFL of like the Brown though, the best and mm. first. It's not actually... Yeah. Most valuable player, so, like because I think NBA is like a really good one with that votes, sort of stuff, yeah. right? You literally have you've only got five people on a court at any given time, so you sort of have like mm. a very clear idea of like if you take this person off that team, what are they? Horrible. AFL is a little bit different, so who are the ones that really stand out? And I think so. This is your lineup: all the dudes in the schoolyard who's, who's getting, getting picked first? first. It's probably Bont, uh, or Dacos, yeah. But I don't. No, know. no, you're not looking at Nick Dacos when you're looking at all these dudes, Bont. Jezza Cameron, Max. Yeah. Petrarca, Cripps. Yeah. Nick Dacos. Cripps or Bont, maybe. He is yeah. a small, slight like that. man. But mm. I'm talking the schoolyard lineup. <laughs> Fair enough. But again, that's probably even a little bit of a different argument than yeah. most valuable of your, like, because, like, you think about someone in Sydney, like, they're a much deeper team yeah. mm. in the midfield than Carlton. Brisbane, same sort of thing, right? Like, Lockie Neal, Dunkley and Co., like, they're really, really deep. Yep. Uh, not deep, North Melbourne. Yeah, 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 it's pretty easy to pick most valuable. She's a, yeah. So, Sliver. Anyway, nah, good stuff. Either. Most valuable player? Grips. Freddie Grundy. Max Gorn. I like to Wait, Do we have something call. to give, Cripper? Or? I think we've got a oh. uh, Patrick Cripps Cup. Do we? Is it the pa Patrick oh, Cripps for Petrol da, 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 da. Motion Award trophy? <laughs> yeah. The Patrick Cripps My Back and Shoulders Are Hurting From Carrying This Team <laughs> Award it goes to Patrick Cripps. If you're oh, watching Cripper. the YouTube, there is quite a lovely, lovely cup. It's an actual trophy. That's right. Yeah. So we'll actually, actually have to, uh, I'll take that with me to Brisbane and I'll present it to him before the game. That would be I'm hilarious. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Actually, I've only got seven kilos of carry-on, so I might How heavy is it? Oh, geez, I'll get, I'll that's going to be pushing it. I'll get the squid to put it in his backpack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, legends.
of the year. The AFL Today Show favorite dude of the year, the legend of the year. Who's the biggest legend? Ooh. Uh, Dusty was an easy one for me, just to be the biggest legend of the year. It's he like, retires. Had the 90,000 to 300. Yeah, he's like, yeah, exactly. look at me. Bit of he time. kicked the first goal. I was like, deuces, I'm out. Yeah, and then he's out. It was such a legendary, like, I've already hit on this many a time this uh, season in this show. Like, it is very, very weird to see, like, the passing of an epoch, the yeah. bit end of an era, obviously, with Richmond uh, and also with Dusty. Like, yeah. you know, I still remember as a starry eyed little teen. <laughs> and now he goes, he becomes one of the game's finest players, uh, like, literally ever. And so he is the legend. And, like, the way that he pieced out, still not talking to the media. We'll never plays, see we wouldn't even again. know where he is. Plays yeah. his 300th, everyone's there. It was awesome. And that's like such a legendary gear that is the legend of the year for me. Uh, closely followed by at home Noah Anderson. Yep. Who's the best player Don't in the world. Don't mind comp. that, yeah. Uh, and Rochelle. <laughs> I absolutely love the teeth thing. I thought it was fantastic. I was thinking him too. It was. Uh, Adelaide trying to go, oh, don't be fun and do this stuff. And then like other people go, no, it's because he's not accountable. It's like that team sucks. Mm. Yeah. Like, why are you dropping well, Rory Laird comes out in the media and says, be accountable. And then he proceeds to run away from a hard ball. Tough scenes. Legit. Tough scenes. All right. Stats boy, legend of the year. Yeah, I'm going really left field here. Uh, Can't wait the till power you get to fans. Mine. Yeah, maybe yours will be a bit more different, but uh, I'm going Ken Hinckley. He said, uh, stuff for you guys. Uh, Never <laughs> dare is a bad. Exactly. Unless you're Ken, 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 Ken. Exactly right. Ken, he, what, what's it called? They'll they call for his head. It's happened about they five times. They were burning effigies Burn- at Alberton. Not wrong. They, it's happened about five times in his career. And he says, stuff you all. We're going to make the finals. They made top two after people saying that he should get sacked. They weren't even going to make the finals. Top two, he said, stuff you all. I think he's a legend just for getting through all of that. Very, uh... Yeah, very strong will just to get through all of that right. as a coach, as a person. And then he's got the, the top two. So he's my legend of the year. Think, and he said, stuff you all. I think you need to hold off on this one till the end till of the, the finals. I because agree. if they get bounced in straight sets, Koshy's going to do... You know when Rex Banner stood on the catapult? Yeah. Koshy will do that to Ken Hinkley. But at this yeah, point He's going to put yeah. him in the cash cow cab and just drive <laughs> it off a pier. Yeah. But I think he's a legend just for just saying, yeah, stuff you all. Yeah. Nice one. Good Alex. On. Adam Simpson. What? Yeah. Because he had a very, very fat contract. And he's like, you're going to have to sack me till I leave. Because at the end of last year, everyone's like, sack Simpson, sack Simpson, get rid of him. He's on a lot of coin. He's just like, <laughs> just got to see it out because I'm getting paid. Then they get to the point where they're like, you're going. You're gone, and he's man. like, thanks, boys. Give me these ones. Mm. They asked him to coach one more game. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. And ever since then, West Coast have somehow gotten even worse. Adam Simpson for cashing a check and a big one at that. Yeah. Explains a lot about Alex's work ethic, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> but cash money. Yeah. <laughs> Make that money. And secondly, uh, Darwin only, Jack Lukosius. It's Darwin, Jack Lukosius. Darwin, Jack Lukosius. <laughs> I like so that. So Jack Lukosius every time he was actually in Darwin. Yeah. I like that. He did w- kill would it up win there. the Coleman, the Brownlow, the Norm Smith, the Gary Ayres, MVP. the Coaches Association, most the courageous. NBA MVP yeah, as well. Like, honestly. <laughs> Somehow. Maybe just like Brecky Luxer. You know? Yeah. Possibly, yeah. That's what they do up and down. I was like, I didn't know. I, I would love a bit of Brecky Luxa. <laughs> All right. That was MVP, Legend of the Year. How about LVP? Least oh. valuable player of the year. Uh, mine's very obvious. Clayton Oliver. For the amount that he's getting paid and what he gave the Melbourne oh. Football Club this year. See, I like you whipping out the Melbourne Football the Football Club yeah. every so often. <laughs> Every so often. You so it's like how table. it's great that the Western Bulldogs Football Club are playing their first AFLW uh, home game that and works. their final at the same yeah, ground. Exactly. See, there is context to use the phrase football, football club. club. Okay, okay. Unless you're Gary Lyon, which is every three seconds because you're <laughs> a moron. Uh, but Clayton Oliver, for that dollar, that amount of dollars and that lack of production mm. was very clearly... We didn't uh, have a preseason, Jim. He's in he, exactly. a preseason. <laughs> here's where the money is, and here's where the production is. It's the biggest gap in the comp this year, in my oh, opinion. Oh, there's so another that's one. The least valuable player. Oh. All right, stats boy. Talking about gaps, uh, money. The highest played player in the league. The highest played or the highest paid? He just loves played. Did I say played? I thought I said paid. Highest paid player in the league. I might have actually said that. Ben McKay. He was on $1.5 million. What did he do for Essendon? He just kept handballing it to the other team. He has to be the least valuable player. Like you said about Clayton Oliver, the amount of money they're paying Ben McKay to the output, he shouldn't even be on half the amount of money he's on. I actually didn't mind him at North, but he's just gone worse and worse this year. And uh, Essendon fans, yeah, least valuable player by far. I don't know. You sound like a salty North fan. No, I oh, actually, I wouldn't still mind him at our club because we don't have any bigs, but that's another story. No, least fine. valuable player. Ben McKay. I might Alex. have to talk about him later as well. Hmm. Max King. 
19 goals in 12 games and he's on near enough to a million bucks a year. Mm. St Kilda went five and seven with him in the team. Without him, they beat Sydney, Geelong, Carlton. Oh, that's one. That does actually bring up another one for uh, my most valuable player was Lockie Fogarty because uh, every oh, yeah. time he played, Carlton basically won. Yeah. Well, Robbie Fox for this one. I think he's lost two games. Nice. Really? Least valuable player again, Pito for the Blues. Yeah. But unfortunately, they t- TDK goes down and the Blues keep losing. Mm. Uh, but at least they still have a Ruckman, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> good one. That was least valuable player. How about the best off-season pickup? Who was the best player Ooh. picked up this off-season? Mine is obvious. They just picked him up for a bag of chips. The Hawks. Massimo D'Ambrosio. Yeah, that is a good one. All Australian squad member that Essendon didn't need. Uh, easily the best off-season pickup in my brain. Though I do like Alex's. Yeah. Uh, Brody Grundy for me. The Swans have been crying out for Ruckman for so goddamn long. Yeah. I loved Ruck Jesus, loved what he did, but Brody Grundy Ruck is Jesus. an A plus Ruckman. And the Swans were, what, top of the ladder when he was absolutely flying. Bit of a dip when he wasn't going That's well. That's my kind of thing. He yeah. also had like a bit of a rough second half of yeah, the season. He though. did. But when the Swans were, it's like, all right, pack her up, boys. They're top of the ladder. And it's just going to be cruised to the end of the season. Brody Grundy was firing. Yeah, ever see a team make it halfway through the season, put the queue in the rack, and still cruise? <laughs> I know, and they premiership? still were first. Oh. Yes, once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, stats boy. Uh, it's going to be the guinea pig, Jack Ginevan. He was an absolute star this year. I think everyone thought, oh, is that Schultz trade going to uh, come off? That was awesome. Every player that the Hawks brought in, they're just like, we're awesome. Malby Ochoa mm. even lifted. Uh, so many players You could literally just go, best pick up. Hawthorne. Hawthorne. You can say half the Hawthorne team. Ginevan, he also just brought that sort of dog or snarl or whatever you want to call it to the Hawks no, and just jerk. turned them all into absolute jerk. jerks. Yeah, they're all jerks and they all just laugh at all their opponents. They've got like 10 guineas now. So he just brought that culture, that energy, and it's been awesome for the Hawks. Will uh, Ginevan and Watson be the most hated duo in the next five years? <laughs> Probably, and they'll kick about, yeah, 50 goals between them uh, yep. at least. So pretty 100%. cool. There you go. Uh, surprise award. Best vibes team of the year. It's Hawthorne, Oh, right? well, that's obvious, yeah. Pure vibes. Like, Hockball. Yeah. They're quite literally the biggest surprise of the season, and it was huge. But they're it just awesome. great to watch. They're appointment TV. Like, I need to watch this because I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be fun. Yep. And after round seven, you would not have said that. No. Definitely not. It's crazy. Leo, Probably. clip that one up. I know you will. <laughs> All right. That was the best off-season pickup. Who was the worst off-season pickup? Uh Obviously, we uh, we know our own teams very well, but yeah. I feel like Carlton's off-season pickups weren't too bad. No, he didn't really Elijah have a bust. Elijah Hollins did a pretty good job. Like, it was all... Uh, we had one... Uh, Orazio, Orazio Fantasia had, like, a couple of moments. Didn't he kick, like, four goals in a game? Uh, Orazio, I think... But he was, bit, he's been pretty accurate. His delivery on that uh, in that fourth quarter... It was a the, nice kick, yes. Who kicked that? Was it always or someone? Uh, anyway, it was beautiful. Oh no, that was to the that was the Brody, Brody Camp. Yeah, Brody, Brody Camp. Camp. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Dylan Stevens was the worst offseason pickup. <laughs> there were such high hopes for him at North Stats Boy. And, I, well, uh, I remember talking about Alex in the preseason. I was like, this guy's all right. He has a, has a bit something about him, and then we he just, was really integral. Uh, we the either ruined him uh, or grand he, final run. He's never got a hardball in his life. So yeah. So yeah, there Can't was an interview him. with Canar Beats and on another podcast during the year, and they talked about that draft period where Canar Beats and who was the head of recruitment for the Swans. He wanted to pick Caleb Sarong. Oh. And was convinced otherwise to pick Dylan Stevens. Well, that's and there not was good. Without saying it, it's like you see when players come into the club and before they leave, it's it's about work ethic and buy-in mm. and you know, and responding when the chips are down. Okay, Dylan Stevens doesn't work hard. Sure. It was a nice whack on the way out. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for pick 19, by the way. Uh, uh, someone talked about it. Stats boy, worst off-season pickup. I'm just going doubling down. Ben Mackay, simple as that. So uh, you, just, you just say gingers. <laughs> well, I, 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 racist. <laughs> racist. He's not a ginger. Yes, he no, is. He's, not, he's got no hair. How can you be a ginger? They're um, basically oh, ginger. Ben, that's he's another shot. That, that feels like something. <laughs> that was probably too far. <laughs> that is, uh, <laughs> he's, got, he's on mosh or something. HR! Uh, HR! <laughs> he doesn't what? work here. Um, I actually wanted to say Dylan Stevens, but you already wrote it down, so I'm just doubling down on Ben Mackay. I, yeah, I do, did like him at North, but what is he doing now at Essendon? Not good. He is hilarious. Alex. Uh, mine is Lockie Schultz because not for the output, but for what they've given up for him. They've given up he their first. a lot of goals, yeah. Not that many. Mm. Uh, he had that one okay game, which just happened to be round 23, but they've given up their first round draft pick this year for him. I expect uh, Collingwood thought, oh, this would be pick 15 plus. It's a pick in the top 10. It's not great. Tough. Before like free agency composite and all that crap comes in. Right now, it is a top 10 pick. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I do like that. Who wins this year's Rising Star? Oh, I didn't, yeah. 
This one's very easy for me. My beloved Ollie Dempsey. He got the nomination in round one, never looked back, and I did bet on him quite a while ago. So there we go. I don't mind that. Alex? I think it's Dempsey too, but I think Matt Roberts deserves a shout for probably top three. Why is that? Who's he played for? Sydney. Oh, there you go. go. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> no, he was very good. I'll, I'll, give, I'll, give you that. I'll give you that. If Sam Darcy and Harley Reid were eligible, who wins? Sam Darcy and Harley Reid. Oh. Go on, Sam Darcy. Darcy probably gets it at the end. No, I reckon Sam he Darcy. was inconsistent as. He had a rough start of the year, but he was a mm. wreck down the stretch. Mate, he kicked 14 goals against North. That's not hard. We could do that. Harley Reid didn't do that. That's boy. Who's your rising star? Well, I think, I thought it was just our rising star, not the actual rising. The actual rising star, Ollie Dempsey, will win it. Sure. But sure. I will go with George Wardlaw. The Warlord, he's an absolute freak. Hard as a cat's head. He's just a gun. You, every team would uh, yeah, want a young guy I like that, running at the ball into the contest and things like that. I wouldn't want George Wardlaw because I'm worried his career will be over in two seasons. I will. Uh, I don't even want to talk about that. He's my rising star. This year. Yeah, I know. He's my rising star, though. But he does need to be careful with that because oh. we don't want uh, that early in, the, in his career. Yeah, to have lots it's of a concern. Like so, but yeah. Warlord. He's, he's Zach Butters buttering himself. Like when at the start of Butters' career, you're like this dude is going to really hurt himself. Yeah. Last two years, he's, he's been stopped right kamikaze. That. That's true. That's true. We also hit on it during the season. We don't need to have a best and fairest aspect to the rising star. No. It's weird. Yeah, I, yes. So for Harley agree, Reed yeah. and Sam Darcy being suspended at some mm. point during the season, they should Sam still be eligible. Sam Darcy should, should have been made eligible for everything because he absolutely decked Braden Maynard. Like, that's like, yeah, that's a win. you that's a win. should be knighted. Yeah. <laughs> Lifetime <laughs> contract, wherever you want to go, whatever coin, there you go. Lord of Australia. Put him on the $5 note. Like, something yes. Like that. <laughs> Don't mind that. Uh, because, like, it's weird that Rising Star has a best and fairest component. It shouldn't. It's like, you are literally, are you the best, are you the risingest of stars? Yeah. Yep. Right now, at this point. Oh, yeah. Nothing about best and fairest in there. Speaking of which, we're going to line them up in the playground, gentlemen. Best young bloke, you would draft number one to start a new team. Ooh. Young bloke is purposefully amorphous. Is this 20 or younger? We could probably go 22 and under, which is with like that, that team, yeah. Oh, it's man, i got to change my Actually, answer. I'm, oh, I'm happy with my answer. I'm going Harley Reid. Whoa, Harley Reid, bam, bam, bam. He's the mix of Chris Judd, Ben Cousins, John Doritich. <laughs> Like everyone. <laughs> Craig Bradley, Sticks Kerner, and Gary Ablett, Wayne Carey. Lewis Roberts Thompson. Rolled into one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Harley like Reid. Because uh, I love he's got a bit of the S about him. He's, he's like, a prick. I'm just get, I'm going to like 100% give you the fend because I can. I'm going to run out of my way yeah, yeah. to give you the fend. He doesn't need to sometimes. He's like running yeah. at you to get to the fend. He's going to get out of my way, idiot. It was at that point Christian Petrarca decided to leave Melbourne. I'll mm. pay that. Maybe. I love Harley Reid. I've sung about him plenty this year. <laughs> I w- if you lined up everybody, I'm going to Harley Reid. He's massive. Yep. He's a gun. He can do everything. Whoa, ho, Harley Reid. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, it felt like a funeral, like an ending. Stats boy. Uh, Harry Sheasel. Harry, Harley Reid would beat up Harry Sheasel. Yeah, he would. Yeah, but that's not what the if award you was. First, it's best young bloke. If you took He's him a way first, better player. Oh, so, yeah, best, best young bloke, you'd take number one. You didn't say they would if beat they're, him up. If they're standing next to each other and you took I Harry Sheasel number agree. one. Every answer of this is who would win in a fight. Apparently, <laughs> exactly. but that's not what it says on the bloody run. But that's it. it. It's a, he German suplexed a guy. <laughs> I agree. Harley Reid, I'll be backing in a fight. Don't you worry about ha- it. No, you you were lining them up in a <laughs> That's not what in a schoolyard, <laughs> picking number one. Sasper goes, I'll take Sheezel. Harley Reid goes, bang, no, you're not. Gunk, and then beats you up. Like That's how he goes. Oh, yeah, like, he's, he's number one. Sheezel, just because I, it says who you would draft in a team. I'm taking Harry Sheezel. He's one of the classiest players in the comp already. He's on the same track in stats-wise as Nick Dacos, or even better. So I'm going to take him. Cool. Excellent. Alex? I'm going to go Sam Darcy because when you Ooh. said they're under 22, I'm like – you can find the next gun midfielder. Sam Darcy's literally that. do not grow on trees. The athleticism and skill that this bloke has for a second year player who's over two meters tall. Imagine when he puts on another 10 kilos of muscle mm. and learns how to outbody opponents instead of just jumping. He's going to be elite. And also as a Sydney Swans fan, Errol Goulden as well. Yeah, Sam Darcy yep. puts on a bit more weight and you know, yeah. can clunk some more. He might be as good as Josh Caddy. Uh, <laughs> 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 anyway. Uh, Dirtiest dog act of the year. Who had the dirtiest dog act this year? Uh, Two meter Peters hit on Harry Cunningham, wasn't it? Yep. That was pretty dirty. That was pretty bad, yeah. Absolutely cleaned up the dude. 
Uh, Nick Hines missed elbow in the same game. Are we, are we giving – so just say this was actually – the players were here. Are we giving them the award for the dirtiest dog act? Yeah, and well, after, we're like, also, pose, like, yeah, I did But we're dog also act. giving Tumita Peter his walking papers because he'll probably end up at Melbourne next Ooh, year. Oh, there you go. It's not a bad idea. The – yeah, the dirtiest of dog acts. It was pretty bad. And there was also the tunneling incident later in the oh, season. Oh, but Eric Hipwood's tunnel. Yeah, Hipwood's tunnel was uh, pretty George Yardis did one yeah, as well. Yeah, they, they were pretty A couple bad. of dog acts. Mm, just mm. don't really like it. And also Sam Powell Pepper just is a dirty dog in general. So, uh, and Cozzy Pickett. And Cozzy Pickett. So. Oh, yeah, anyway, Stats Boy, dirtiest dog act for you. I'm going the other sort of spectrum. Horse Longmire benching Amadi on nine goals. <laughs> what an absolute dog <laughs> act. It, it was. You can't do that when a guy's on nine goals. Amadi will never kick ten goals in the rest of his career. I'm calling that right now. I don't care if we can clip it up for years and years. He is never going to have another chance to kick ten goals. He's, He's not that good. Point. He kicked nine goals. Horse, what are you doing? Leave him on the field for one. He would have kicked another goal easy. How, well, they, how long was he off for? About last twelve bit? minutes. Exactly. He would have. He would have done that in two minutes, <laughs> and then he could have rested for the last ten. Dog and the boy. That's yeah. my dog act. I reckon. Yeah. That is a dog act, horse. Yeah. What are you doing, Alex? Uh, the demon's doctor sending Christian Petrarca back out on the field oh, when he had a ruptured spleen. Oh. I saw the footage again of it last night. He was whiter than Casper. It's yeah. like. That guy's in a lot of pain. What are we like, doing? Even if Petrarca's going, oh, I'm good. Just put me out. This doctor's supposed to go. No. But this is. We need don't. to check you and, out and, a little and, bit. And, more. and I know that Petrarca said, came out and said he wanted to go back. That's, not, That's great. Yeah. The doctor should overrule and go, nah, mate, you look like you're about to die, which, mm. which he, he almost did. did. Yeah. Good not call. Great. Good call. Yeah. Good job, Demons. <laughs> Spray. Of the year. Now, this can be a couple of things. Obviously, it can be a coach's spray, uh, you know, a famous Ross Lyons spray if mm. you need. You need a rocket Rodney Ede fired up, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or just a shot that's been missed on the full, aka okay, a Harry Mackay special. I'm going to kick this one in the Yarra. Check this out. Uh, so with that in mind, Nick Watson's Nick Watson's entire season, basically up until like the last four weeks, yeah, he was just like, bing, Very bing, 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 yeah. bing, 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 There was a point, what was he, like one and nine for the year? It, yeah, but he kicked one, what did he kick, like one five one game as yeah. well against Richmond? I think Travis Boak was also along the same, like behinds. hiding to a nothing where he just I didn't kick about a goal Boak, yeah. all season. Yep. The Lewis Jetta Award, as it's known. Yeah, uh, he, he has the second longest. He longest. Nine, no, he kicked 19 behinds to start his career. He yeah. kicked his first. First goal, the crowd went ballistic. That's nuts. I like it. But yeah, the wizard was spraying them everywhere. There was it like was. there were ones where you're just like looking at it going, that is almost gone into orbit and it's gonna reach the Yarra. You've completely shanked it. But then the Harry Mackay Spray of the Year Award, <laughs> then so named to Harry Mackay. Uh at different points this season, every time he lined up for something, you, you just like, never knew. Here we go. If it was and like then, close as well, you're like, oh. In the crowd at Gather Round, when Carlton were playing Frio, yes. he had an open goal square. He was running in, spent it before he had it, yep. and like missed his foot and didn't score at all. <laughs> that was so bad. Being there in person for something like that and just watching the crowd just go, oh, oh no, <laughs> is an unrivaled experience, apart from like when he – Goes for a snap around his body, ten meters out, directly in front. Yeah, uh, he did also miss a goal from ten meters out in front last year. So this is why it's the Harry Mc Harry Mackay spray of the year. But he was much better this year. He was a bit more accurate. Credit yeah. where credit is due. Well done, Harry. But still, a couple of just stinkers. Yeah. <laughs> Stats boy. Uh, I'm going to go with a spray by coach Ken Hinckley. When he was laying into the young Port midfield, he, he sort of got into Jason Lawrence Francis, gave him a spray, but then would also have that sort of dad moment where he was trying to be a bit nicer. Then he turned around and gave Butters a spray, and then he turned into a dad. Which prompted and the amazing AFL Today skit. Footy Dads. Exactly. Footy Dads God, was born from this, so dads. Ken Inkley has to get another shout-out for Spray of the Year. He was yeah, laying into him. It was like an old-fashioned spray, and then from that sort of moment onward is when they started going well again. So maybe the spray, well, a lot of coaches don't do it anymore, but maybe it needs to come back. So oh, these bloody millennials. Yeah, it's just wokeism and things yeah. like that. So Ken Inkley, yeah, he did the job. There we Stats go. guy's the dude <laughs> oh, that's on man. Instagram <laughs> complaining about stuff. Well, no, I'm like definitely isn't. not. I'm definitely not. All right, Alex. I got two. First of all, Mitch McGovern after the siren against oh, yeah. Collingwood. He's concussed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he should have been off then. Exactly. <laughs> well, he should have been. I don't know why he kicked concussed, that. Then he should have been He's like doing these Logan ones. Logan McDonald's then. wasn't great. That was way worse. Mm. And then Sam Mitchell at quarter time when yes. Hawthorne were getting deleted by the Swans. He came out and was laying into someone. I can't remember what it was for, but the Swans had kicked two quick goals late in the quarter, and Mitchell was fuming. And after the game, I'm like, what's that? He's like, 
there's some things that we do mm. and we don't do, and those are the things we don't do. It's like, don't get oh, in the way of Sam Mitchell. He's going to kill someone. <laughs> nice one. D- uh, honorable mention from me goes to Dimmer's Grow the F Up. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, which is pretty good. It was a good spray. Didn't even deliver it to the players. He just delivered it to the and, media. And, delivered it to yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like we all need to grow I the like, F Up. I like how just our good mate Andrew Dillon Gillen was just like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they just sticked it off, apparently, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if he's going to let uh, Clarko get away with, like, murder, uh, may as well let Dimmer get away with an F-bomb. Yeah. Right, who backed it up the most this year? Ooh. You already mentioned it earlier, Stats Boy. Ginnivan. Yeah, it has to be him. Backed it up. Talked his trash, won a flag last year, and rocked up to Hawthorne, kept the vibes going. Yeah. Got them in, well, didn't get them into the finals, but was a big part of that team and those vibes and getting them to the finals and turning that into an excitement machine there at Hawthorne. So, Guinea. I think he backed it up the most. Yep. Stats boy? Uh, Chad Warner. I don't like his TN boots, but he sort of walk, talks the talk, walks the walk. He hasn't he worn them for a while. He's yep. been wearing a new, a new green variety that Errol yeah. signed. But he always has flashy boots. and, and Errol and, signed yeah. Chad's boots? Yeah, so wait, Errol, wait, what? That's awesome. Yeah, so before, I think it was the game against Fremantle in Perth, yeah. when the Swans kicked like 13 goals, two to start the game, and Warner kicked three from outside 50, Errol had signed one of his boots. <laughs> that's so random, but obviously- It was a like, gag. A bit of a gag, yeah. but yeah, the, he sort of is one of those little annoying players, and he's like, I'm going to kick three goals on your head. He gets into, he has a lot of chat with the opposition and things like that. So he definitely yeah. backed it up because he's an absolute freak. Yeah. Nice one. I like that. Alex? Uh, Jezza Cameron and Gather Round. He Ooh. got to the I was like, pretty boring. <laughs> Can't wait to play footy and go home. It was just the best game of Gather Round. He had 27 touches, kicked two goals, four, had eight marks and about 10 score involvement. He did a bit of everything. Yeah, he, yeah. he got bored. So he decided to play one of his best games of the year. Yeah. Very nice. nice. Very good. <laughs> Flog of the year. Oh, one of the this most, is the obvious, most obvious award that we'll do all season. This is <laughs> one of the most prestigious awards here at AFL today as well. Like, you know, we do talk about flogs a lot. We do. Uh, we do put the flogs on blast. That's our job. We're fans. Yeah. We're not journos. We're fans. We're just dudes. We're just some guys. Flogs. Like God. flogs who'd sit around, have a beer gut. Flog. Absolute yeah. flog. Mine is the war criminal himself, <laughs> Braden Maynard. The Show favorite. floggiest yeah. flog that ever did flog this year. How did he get? Up. I'm assuming Collingwood knew what they were doing when the most every team nominated their most courageous player. Collingwood nominated him. Considering he tries to fight everybody who's smaller than him and then does yeah. what absolutely no bar of anyone who's his size or above. <laughs> yeah. Something his mum should have taught him when he was only pick on kids your own size. You know, don't pick on the little tackers. That's why Stats Boy never gets picked uh, on here. Yeah, we, go, yeah. we don't pick on him, right? Because no. he's oh, yeah, not sure. our size. you got to listen to Simple your mum's advice, Jim. And Braden Maynard is an absolute flog who tries to, A, hurt people, war criminal. B, only tries to fight people who are smaller than him. He's actually not that great of a player too. Like he's, he, he's, he goes he's back a, with the flight. That's he's why, a, like, yeah. He, yeah, he's a bit of a barometer. Like if he's up and about, Collingwood's yeah. up and about, but you don't notice him. Yep. No, I agree with that. Stats boy. Uh, yeah, I'll stay away from Brandon Maynard. I agree with that you statement. Should. But yeah, just you. stay away from him in general. Yeah. You're smaller than him, yeah, so you are. might bash him. Nah, we're can, taller than him, so can, we, can, we'd be sweet. Uh, Carlton fan who threw the bottle of the umpire. That's obviously on the weekend, very yeah. recent. That is the biggest flog moment of the whole year, and that guy should go to get jail and everything. That was, that's just horrible. The umpire should never feel endangered uh, while he's umpiring. Endangered. Was it endangered confirmed that it was a Carlton fan? No. Hasn't been confirmed that it was well, a Carlton. Uh, there was someone at the Carlton St Kilda game. Carlton were, what was it, 10 behind in the free kicks. I'm just assuming yeah, it was but, a Carlton fan. <laughs> anyway, it was a fun fan at the ump, uh, threw the bottle at the ump. Just the knob who threw the water bottle. Really big flog. I reckon he's uh, flew over to Bali in, in hiding now, but hopefully yeah. they find him. I think he has been arrested. Oh. Okay, good. Yep. Charges later. Yeah. All right, Alex. Braden Maynard's mate who ran on the pitch and, oh, then, forgot about that. and <laughs> slipped over and then posted the photo with Maynard with the grass stain the grass on his stain. pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really just ties that in nicely for the uh, flog of the year. The world's dumbest man. Good job. Uh, I love flog of the year. I like this one even more. The best hair Ooh. in the AFL in 2024. It can be only one. It's just like Highlander. It's my best mate. It's Ned Moyle. <laughs> he had the greatest hair in the entire comp. That was amazing. Followed very closely by Jed Walter until they massacred my boy. <laughs> my boy. Jed Walter's hair. Was just glorious before they uh, Samsoned him, and uh, here we are. But Ned Moyle, friend of the program, friend of the show, my yeah. best mate, popped on a couple of weeks ago. We talked about his glorious mane. He easily runs away with best hair. Nice. Stats boy. I'm going Aaron Norton. Amazing long locks. He's got the sort of the perm going on, and I love it with the thick white headband. It just looks awesome. Really Why old doesn't school. anyone pull the headband to annoy him? Oh, I feel like that's a I'd bit too it. far. You no. would do that, wouldn't you? You would, yeah. you would pull someone's headband. I just think it looks really old school and looks really cool. So his, his hair just 
works really well. Nice one. Alex? I was going to say, our other best mate, Cheeks. Oh. With his fl- I saw him run onto the field the other day. He The headband had gone missing, so the hair was flowing. Cotton, <laughs> it was glorious. <laughs> He's, he's, James Rubenbottom's hair is beautiful. Yeah. Like, beautiful. It is good. And if we're going to go facial hair, Thriller Beard. Yes. Don't he was that. 17% less scary on the weekend without the beard. Still <laughs> took nine marks, kicked a bunch of goals. Put the beard on, you'll win the Coleman. Put the beard on. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just put it back, put it back on. That fake beard, just put it on. I am happy to uh, put myself forward as a beard coach yep. uh, for any out there in the <laughs> AFL who need to go and win a Coleman with a glorious, awesome beard. Fair enough. I'll uh, give you some tips. We'll talk about <laughs> trimming. We'll talk about salty caramel. The, um, essentially, the, the uh, oil, oil, beard oil, the, the, the smell from here, <laughs> the maintenance that you continue to need. But yeah, this is the uh, salted caramel. I think today it is I called it. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one I know. He has. Yeah. <laughs> lumberjack. Oh, <laughs> you look like a lumberjack. Uh, there's also a uh, <laughs> racist. Hey. So racist. I can tell you um, an overalls and a, and a flan, flan like shirt. No, I'm very weak. That's the problem. Yeah. So. He's, has he got the back to yeah. lift yeah, up the axe? I can't lift the axe because I'm a because shoulder. That's because of all his he used to do. That's it. It's all that lumberjacking. <laughs> Send you to the sawmill. All right. Following on from best hair of the year, most handsome player. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, mine was a runaway winner, Bailey Banfield. <laughs> we winner. couldn't all choose the same person because I had Bailey Banfield yeah. ready to go. I would have picked He him. was locked in the chamber. Yeah. Clocked, ready to go, but nah. I love Bailey. So that's boy. I'm going Harry Hilmerberg. I think Alex had him in his uh, yep. most handsome I team. Had everyone that's on the three people on this list were in the well, handsome, handsome team. handsome team. There you go. But just he's got when he does long hair, looks cool. When he has short hair, he still looks really tough. Big guy. I really think he's handsome. Winner's called Harry. Very yeah. handsome. There you go. Awesome. Alex Jack Steele. He is very yeah. handsome. Traditionally handsome. Yeah, you just look at him like, yep. God damn, you're handsome. <laughs> You're a beautiful man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally. That's one of the good things to kill to have going for them. Jack yeah, Steele. Bailey Banfield is so handsome, he makes me angry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Ah. You're already a footballer. Like, I'm just an ugly git. I, like, yell about footy. You're an AFL footballer and you're that handsome. It's just unfair. That's why like, I do couldn't watch footy. Also, yeah, uh, we can also give votes to Finn Callahan, Connor Rosie, and Ollie Florin. The Connor Rosie should Connor be Rosie, I, he didn't play mm. enough for me this year yeah. to make the most handsome. So, okay. Ah, so there's a games trigger. Yeah, games trigger. They, they actually become more handsome when they're better at footy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. We've got everyone in our mentions going, Charlie Kerno didn't play enough games. Oh. Yep. We've got a few more left. We've got Specky of the Year who oh. took the biggest grab. Uh, mine's obviously Jamie Billy Elliott. That yeah. was absolutely awesome. Uh, Anzac Day? Yeah. Okay. It was just a absolute ladder. Yeah. And mm. that is always going to be spectacular and always going to be my spec here. The uh, shades of sauce. Uh, actually, look, I do love the uh, the corner pocket grabs, like standing on someone's shoulders. It's the uh, Stephen Silvani yep. just absolutely on top of a dude standing on someone's shoulders. The was it Mark McVeigh on top of someone's shoulders, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, I forgot. McVeigh. I forgot his name. Uh, the Essendon bloke with the red hair. And – Moorcroft, that's it. Moorcroft, Gary Moorcroft. Gary Moorcroft's one of the best marks of all time. Yeah, Uh, did break his tailbone though, never played mm. again. And Andrew Walker, one of the absolute greatest snags with the uh, wrap around his head and off he goes. He man did one of them against the D's at at the MCG, got mark of the year. Beautiful. All right, who else has got a spec of the year? Stats boy. Yeah, Bobby Hill. I think he's the only one that can challenge Billy Elliott for the mark of the year. Uh, Was against North, was when uh, my beloved North were up by 52 points, and then they were charging back. Bobby Hill takes that big mark, I'm like... It's over. The yeah. the uh, comeback is definitely on. Bobby just got up so high, top of the goal square. He was unbelievable that game. And yeah, mark of the year. Or spec nice of the year. Alex? Chunley Warner against the Western Bulldogs at Marvel early, earlier in the year. Came yeah. in from the side, jumped, landed on the shoulders, got the ride, took the mark, kicked the goal. Nice. nice. Very good. The special. Yeah. Snag of the year. I love this one. How have you snuck this one in there? Absolutely. <laughs> I know. Out of the clouds. Ashton Moyer, my <laughs> good mate. Hanging it was okay. Out, hanging out <laughs> hey, there. He won the voting that week. It was sick. Uh, <laughs> my mate hanging out at the uh, Oz Kick with the Squids. Mm. Came down and hung out in Brunswick, which was lovely. Uh, met the Squid. Five-year-old is like, oh, I have no idea who any of these people are, Dad. I'm like, don't worry. They're all legends. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, and then they both kicked a couple of goals in that Centurion game. That snapped. was a good goal, yeah. Ashton Moore against West Coast. Just his first goal of his career. It was what good, What an yeah. absolute cracking first goal of your career. That's unreal. So Ashton Moore, snag of the year. We had a couple of really good ones, actually, this year. So It's a bit harder to pick 
Uh, yeah, Snag of the Year, then Specky of the Year. Because we've had some absolute those burners, like the Harry Mackay dribbler from like well, uh, that was 35 right. meters mm-hmm. out along Your the Your only that, goal of that quarter. Your only goal of the quarter. So. <laughs> yeah. They literally beat the siren by like an absolute yeah. just scaric of a second. But mm. anyway, uh, Stats Boy, what's your snag of the year? Oh, it's going to be Nick Dacos. I was there at the G. That run that he pretty much made from half back through the middle, took on about 62 blokes, ran through them all, kicked the goal, running at full speed. About 10 guys were trying to catch him behind him. They're all like, well, you got no chance of catching this absolute speedster. The, pa- the skill to take the bounce and kick the goal, running at full pace is so hard. It's one of the hardest things to do in footy, and that's going to be my goal of the year. The best part about it was the fist in the air. As it left his Yeah, as it left his He just knew it he's was like, going that's in. through. We're gone. Yeah, Off he's a, go, boys. And that was the uh, start of that comeback in an awesome game. So, yeah, got to be snag of the year. Alex? Mine's a package deal because this bloke did it twice. We got Jack <laughs> Higgins against Collingwood at the MCG in round two and then against Carlton yeah, in the final that's round. that's the best one. The I don't think one. that was that good. <laughs> <laughs> that bent around a mile. The bend around oh. and then just kicking the goal from what was about 45 metres out on the boundary. It was definitely in. Yeah. was Awesome. Against the Pies, yeah. Yeah, nice one. Just to do it against Carlton and Collingwood to win the game. Yeah, that's great. Mwah. That's very nice. I'll pay that. <laughs> Who? Well, that's all the sort of player awards yes. at the moment. Congrats that's to all, all those players. Congrats to all our winners. We have the cup for Cripper right here. If he wants to come by and pick it up. Uh, <laughs> you got to give it, you got to go. Know, Can I'll, our next I'll, Lord Mayor, the Cuda, come and pick it up? Yeah, I'll maybe. take I'll take a little one up there. So it's like the Ashes uh, replica. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. get a little cosplay replica. In the yeah. Simple as that. Because this one's going to stay on the lock and key, obviously. And so he gets the. Yeah. You gotta be, can't be uh, too Larry with the original. <laughs> uh, but who was the best premiership pick? Hmm. From the start of the season to now. I think this time last year, after the trade period, we were like, Swans, $15, let's go. I can't remember who. who Errol did, uh, Gordon was the best Brownlow pick at that point too as well. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but it turns out Geelong were $18 in the preseason this year. Hmm. That's pretty good. 18 hmm. That's because they didn't make the finals, yeah, last year. Uh, the Swans were $9 still in the preseason. Ooh. Yeah, they were the big preseason vibe team. Oh, like, yes. oh yeah. So everyone's like, oh, they've grew, grew in Grundy, obviously. Everyone yeah, realized Grundy, they Jordan, it's like, oh, yeah, they're, they're good to go. Everybody realized they were going to be the best team in 150 years <laughs> of Aussie rules footy. But the obvious one is Hawthorne. Yeah. No. The Hawks, 67 <laughs> bucks at Did the start get of the them, season. Get on them at they 67? start 0-5. They're 1-6 after round seven's belting. Like, $67 and... Of all the weird permutations that could happen this final series, if I said to you in four weeks' time, yeah, Hawthorne, if I pop back, you know, time travel Jim just pops in behind us and goes, boys, Hawthorne won and then disappeared again. <laughs> would you be like, would that be the biggest shock out of all the teams? No chance, It'd just right? be more shocked no. that you time traveled. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Maybe I figure it out in four weeks' time. We'll Maybe come you back do. and win a packet. What but you you're right. They could make a crazy run because their form the second half of the year season has been – Better than ever. Like, unbelievable. What is their current form line there, social guy Leo in the background? Win, win, win. All I do is win. 11, win. We go. 11 I think and that's 2 right, in yeah. the second half. Is <laughs> the, the, what about the, the percentage bucks, of 160? Not bad. Not bad at all. Can Not score big. a bit. So 67 bucks for Hawthorne was the best premiership pick preseason mm. of the remaining eight teams. Crazy. Very nice. Who, however, is the best pick now, gentlemen, Ooh. to win the premiership? Because I believe this sucks, but it's obviously Sydney. Three dollars so, sixty yeah. with our friends at Top Sports. So mm. this is obviously brought to you by Top Sport. I'll just make sure that that hasn't changed since I wrote it yesterday. But um, still the I same, think I believe. Yeah. If you look at the way and the pathway that Sydney have to the grand final, it's the easiest of any team. I mean, they still got to beat the Giants as long as they get by the Giants. Oh yes, yeah, they're just so good at the SCG as we've talked about all year. So that. That has helped them a lot, yeah. obviously. And well like, deserved being on top of the lap. They've had, yeah, one bad result there. The other one, you change a kick and this one's a, yep. what are they, like nine, nine and one, ten and one at the SCG this year. Yep. So, yeah, I think a dollar ninety for them to make the grand final is yep. a great bet because yep. – They've, they've flipped the switch in the last couple of weeks. They're back in form. And in the middle of the year, we're just like, oh, well, who's playing this one's in the grand final? And I think it looks like that because I still don't believe in Port. I want to see them do it until yep. I believe in them. I think they'll get past Geelong in the first week and then Geelong get knocked out. So a buck 80 for Geelong to be knocked out Ooh. in the semis. And then on the flip side, GWS to make the grand final $2.40. Lose and then run the table. I really like that one as well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Sydney, provided get, they get by GWS and having the second prelim at home 
is just ridiculous. It's mm. just so easy. Like the dollar ninety for them to get to get to the grand final through Top Sport. It's probably my favourite. Uh, Three sixty for them to win it all wouldn't be a giant mm-hmm. surprise either. There, considering that I don't know the trips to the G. How I don't know. Just do you think they're at all worried about? No, I don't think so. Right? They, no, they, they, they're very experienced as well. Yeah. Well, they belted uh, Collingwood at the start of the year at the G. The last game at the G, they beat Hawthorne by ninety points. Yeah, so so as long just as like, they don't play Richmond there, they should be fine. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Stats boy, what's yeah, your best pick? Got a couple other ones. I really like that dollar ninety for Sydney to make the grand final. I think that's that's a really good bet just because of those two home finals. But then I'm going to look at the dogs. Four dollars for the dogs to lose in the semis. So I, I'm I'm backing them uh, in the what is it the Friday night game against the Hawks. They're tall timber, as Alex mentioned on the last show. I think they're going to beat the Hawks. Be a really close game, but I think the dogs will get over the line. But I don't back them against the Cats or the Power. I think they've got way too much experience. Uh, a lot better team overall. So $4 for them to yeah make it to the semi, but then go out in the semi. I think it's really good value there. Nice one. It's pretty good. And looking at some, like in terms of the odds though, so let's go through the odds for the premiership sure. with top sport. $3.60 for Sydney, mm-hmm. $5 for GWS, five fifty for Port Adelaide. Brisbane is seven fifty. Yep. Interesting. In fifth, eight, mm. eight for the Cats, nine for the Dogs, 11 for the Hawks, $31 for Carlton. <laughs> That's a big drop Just off. Just saying. <laughs> We're a moral here, boys. Come on. <laughs> uh, I think my point about the Sydney thing is like if they get through those two finals and mm. make it to the grand final, who feasibly could beat them? And I don't think it's anybody. So Ooh, That'd be nice. I think JWS could beat them on their day. I'm even tempted to tip them in the, in them, the though, I'm even saying. tempted to tip them in the first final of awesome. JWS. All right, Alex, best picks now. Uh, best picks right now. Uh, if we're going to have a look at a player prop, Lockie Whitfield for the most disposals in the finals at $9. Ooh. Just because I think GWS will play four finals and Lockie Whitfield is probably going to get the most touches for the we'll Giants. Them, I look at it, I think they're going to play the Swans in the grand final. I don't think that the Swans are going to play four games. So therefore, just from accumulation during those four games. Nice one. So most disposals well, in yeah. the final. Tom Green's at 460. Errol Gordon at 7. Zach Butters at seven fifty, Whitfield at nine dollars. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you're right. If they're going to play an extra game, then they're going to yeah. probably get the most. So you got to try and find the team that's going to play three, possibly four games. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most goals. Any vibes on this? We've got Jesse Hogan at four eighty, Toby Green at seven, Mitch Georgia, Georgiades at seven fifty, Jezza at eight, Joey Duckett's at fifteen, Jamara at seventeen, Chucky Cameron twenty one, Tom Papley twenty one, Will Halewood twenty one. Don't mind. Charlie at 26. I don't mind Toby Green. Obviously, Hogan won the Coleman, but just the big-time player, Toby Green, especially Alex's sort of theory of if they play an extra game or two, then yeah. he's going to kick a lot of goals. I reckon he's going to average three goals in the finals, Toby Green. All right. Who's going to win the Gary Ayers Award, gentlemen? I'm going to have something on Luke Ooh. Parker at $51. I think he's the, he's the massive player for the Swans in the finals. He had three goals and 20 touches on the weekend. If he does that during the finals, it, it could be him. But then again, you're also looking at someone like uh, Tom Green. If they play four games, you have chances to poll votes in four games. I believe there is a waiting for grand final. Mm-hmm. So I think it's one and a half times. So you can still play three games and win. Therefore, Isaac Heaney can win it at $9.50. I don't mind Zach Butters as well. I haven't got his price. If you could eight fifty, eight fifty, I think that, that's really good value. When Port win, he's just kicking a, kicking a couple of goals and getting 30 touches. So well, he's going to be out there as well. $26 as that's well. That's really good value, yeah. There you go. If the Cats go on a bit of a streak, Jezza is at 21. Yeah. Oh, okay. Considering that they have the double chance, that's huge. What about uh, Tom Stewart, actually? Have we got a price on that? He's way down. He is $41. That's really good value because, as I said before. And, of course, before, Patrick Cripps, 15 bucks. We're winning the flag, <laughs> boys. Hashtag flaggers. All right. There you go. The best pick now. So I think we've all kind of gone Sydney Sydney to at least make the grand final. Make final, yeah. And that might be it. Who wins it all? Ooh. I'm, I've got to stick with Stick with the Swans. Like, I'm a Swans fan. I'm going the opposite side of Sydney. I reckon they could lose the first one and then just get an honest tsunami after that. GWS are going to win the flag. That would be Because I don't. I think out of the top four, the only two teams that could win it are Sydney or GWS. Question. Would you rather lose a prelim so you don't have to lose the grand final? Like if nah, you, you'd want to make it still. Unless you got smashed in the grand final. <laughs> yeah. Because nah, I've been final. there and seen my team lose it. Stop your and Make it's, a grand final. Who's going to win the grand final, Jim? And why is it not Carlton? Well, Swans, because they're the best team in 150 years. <laughs> Okay. Carl, I'm not going to beat him. All <laughs> right. There you go. That is the AFL Today Awards show. We have covered off absolutely every angle, I reckon. Who cool. would you least like to fight in the <laughs> AFL? Uh, oh. 
Adam Kingsley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Michael nice. Voss or Bevo. Any of the coaches with big guns. There you go. Yeah. I like that. Uh, who wins the Brownlow Battle Royale? Oh, we didn't even have a Brattle Royale. Peter Dacos. Um, He'd fight dirty. Yeah, I, I'll back that. I'll back I think that. Cripps just starts throwing dudes through windows and away <laughs> we go. <laughs> All right, that is it for AFL today. We'll be back on Wednesday for the Midweek Madness. It'll be a massive, massive, massive week of finals previews here on AFL Today. We've already done the Thursday previews, the first look preview. This Thursday, we're going to go absolutely hammer and tongs on all four of those matchups. Yeah. Uh, we also have a top five with Wally on Wednesday. It's going to be great. Uh, and, of course, we'll have more AFLW today. We'll have more AFL today. We've got the Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, which is back and flying this week. Season starts this week, guys. Just saying. Get around it. Hold all tickets back as well. So get around all of those shows on your podcast app. Get around them on YouTube as well. They are all there now, which is very cool. Nice. Jump in the comments. We'll read them out on this week's show. I think it's the Wednesday show. We're going to be going full on with the comments. It's a lot a lot of listener yeah nahs, so jump in the comments. Power Leave Prawn Star, hit us up. I know yeah, you he, will. He loves it. Yeah, why have we screwed over the Port Power uh, yeah, they hate, somehow they hate now? Us. So. Yeah, we also got Baz Lenkers in there. Did the Swans win, jumps in. Everyone who jumps in. The guy who loves Jim's beard, who also has a beard, if you're around, please leave a comment. Leave a comment. Uh, but the Power thing is like, yeah, uh, why are the Power not going to win the flag? Uh, just question, you know, just throw that out there. They're going to, yeah, the award goes to uh, most least likely team to win the flag is the Port Adelaide Power. So <laughs> how about it? Well, I'm just trying to, that's red meat, just saying, just saying. <laughs> Prove me wrong, power. Prove me wrong. All right. So subscribe, star, and like all of those shows on your podcast app. Get around them like the Swans taking out the flag. Absolutely moral to win the flag. No doubt <laughs> about that. That's up. Sydney. <sighs> no one. So much. No one could beat the Sydney Swans this year. Don't you worry about that. The award for most unbeatable team this final series, <laughs> the Sydney Swans. All right. Alex is out. That's it. He's left the award show. That'll do us for AFL Today for today. We'll be back on Wednesday for more AFL Today. Until then... Enjoy your awards, awards winners. Thanks to Stats Boy for dressing up. Thanks to Alex for just walking off. <laughs> Look after yourselves. And remember, we're all winners, aren't we? What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.